Good morning guys. It is a rainy spring day, so I thought it would be the perfect opportunity to take you on a tour of my bookshelf. This is my main bookshelf right here, but I also have books on the sides of my desks. I have them in all sorts of random places throughout my tiny house. And so yeah, this bookshelf tour will be a little bit all over the place because we're going to be looking in different spots in my house. But I am just so excited to share with you some of my favorite books ever. Some of the books that mean the most to me. I have brought all of my very favorites over to this tiny house since moving out of my parents' home. There are a lot of books still at my parents that belong to me, but all the most important ones are here. And I'm going to share those with you today. Alright, so we are going to start on my very top shelf with some of my absolute favorite books. First, we have The Institutes of the Christian Religion by John Calvin, which is essentially a systematic theology of the Christian faith written by my favorite reformers. I believe that his interpretation of scripture is the most accurate interpretation of scripture by a reformer in the Reformation and since then. And so as a Calvinist, obviously, this is a huge staple in my collection. Then I have George Marsden's biography of Jonathan Edwards, which is a fantastic, thorough, rich, entertaining biography of one of the greatest Christian theologians and preachers of the New World, of America. Then I have A History of the Christian Church, which is just an encyclopedia-style book covering the Christian Church from its inception in the first century to the present day. Then I have The Little Minister by J.M. Barrie, which is, it has a plastic cover because it is a very delicate antique, and I haven't actually read it yet, but I plan to sooner rather than later. Then I have East of Eden by John Steinbeck, which is arguably one of his most influential works in my life. Then I have actually a notebook, which is full of secrets. Then I have Sex in a Broken World by Paul David Tripp, another notebook full of secrets. The American Puritans, just a short, kind of comprehensive overview. Surprised by Oxford by Carolyn Weber, which is one of my favorite autobiographies of all time. It chronicles this Canadian academic's journey at Oxford University as she studies English literature and as she undergoes an intense spiritual transformation as she meets Christ, as she becomes a Christian. It's just fantastic. I cannot recommend that book enough. Then I have another encyclopedia of church history, an encyclopedia of ancient Rome. The Holy Bible, of course, English Standard Version, another notebook, and I believe that this one is full of my travel diaries from the first time I backpacked Europe. I did that for eight weeks straight out of high school, and this contains all my adventures. And then several notebooks that, these are actually letters that my husband and I wrote to each other while we were dating as kind of a an exercise in communication. Then I have the World War II desk reference, an encyclopedia as well, and finally, this massive tome, which is photographs and explanations of a century of Canadian history. Up above here, I have a few interesting books as well. I have Eight Girls Taking Pictures, which is a novel. The Baker's Secret by Stephen P. Kiernan, which is an awesome novel. I haven't read it in probably five years, but I remember absolutely loving it. The Women in the Castle, Lenin on the Train, which is a history, the Atlas of World History, and then finally the IVP Atlas of Bible History, which I won one as an award in high school for outstanding religious studies, and I was gifted one by my Oma as well, so I have two copies. I should probably give one away. I think the other one is still at my old place, though. And then we are getting into my Oxford and Penguin Classics collection. These are not organized in any way, shape, or form. I'm actually terrible at organizing bookshelves. I usually do it more for aesthetic purposes than practical purposes. So these Oxford classics are all together because I think it looks nice when they're all together, but they're not organized by author, period, subject, or anything like that. So to start, I have The Italian by Anne Radcliffe, Emma by Jane Austen, Tessa the Derby by Thomas Hardy, The Analects by Confucius, The Bag of Agita, Far From the Madding Crowd by Thomas Hardy, Middlemarch by George Eliot, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley, The Karamazov Brothers by Fyodor Dostoevsky, Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne, A Pair of Blue Eyes by Thomas Hardy, The Quran, Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe, Devils by Fyodor Dostoevsky is up top there because it's something I'm currently reading, Anna Karenina by Tolstoy, Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, and then we have The Idiot by Fyodor Dostoevsky, Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky, 
Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. By the way, I promise I've never smoked a cigarette in my life, but I really love that cigarette case up there. Then we have Greek Lives by Plutarch, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, Three Early Modern Utopias by Thomas More, Francis Bacon, and and something Neville. I'm actually not sure of his first name. Then I have A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce, one of my favorite classics of all time and a huge inspiration for the novel that I just completed. War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy, and Joseph Andrews and Shamala by Henry Fielding. And then finally, we have Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Other Tales by Robert Louis Stevenson, The Confessions of St. Augustine, Virgil's The Aeneid, Metamorphosis by Ovid, The Secret Guarded by Frances Hodgkins Burnett, Pride of Prejudice by Jane Austen, Hard Times by Charles Dickens, The Mill on the Floss by George Eliot, The Professor by Charlotte Bronte, Selected Letters of Cicero, the Pilgrim's Progress by John Bunyan, The Consolation of Philosophy by Boethius, and A Christmas Carol and Other Christmas Books by Charles Dickens. My Oxford collection here is missing several titles. I also have Memoirs from the House of the Dead by Fyodor Dostoevsky, and I gave away my favorite copy of Peter Pan in Kensington Gardens and Peter and Wendy, which was a beautiful Oxford Classics edition that I absolutely adored. But that is gone, and that is okay. I love Oxford classics for their incredible introductions, notes, and just material that goes along with the story to help you understand it. Then we have my Penguin classics. So I have City of God by St. Augustine, Fear and Trembling by Soren Kierkegaard, A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf, The Last Days of Socrates by Plato, Kierkegaard's Either Or, Childhood, Boyhood, Youth by Leo Tolstoy, Fall of the Roman Republic by Plutarch, Don Quixote by Cervantes, A uh, Room with a View by E. M. Forster, A Hero of Our Time by Mikhail Lermontov, Mikhail Lermontov, definitely not pronouncing that right, The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton, The Ecclesiastical History of the English People by Bede, and then, I this isn't a Penguin classic, but it's there, so I'll talk about it, is Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, and then up top we have Notes from Underground and The Double by Fyodor Dostoevsky, a Nervous Breakdown by Anton Chekhov, Leo Tolstoy's The Death of Ivan Ilyich, and White Nights by Fyodor Dostoevsky. And I do have Of Mice and Men by John Steinbeck as a Penguin classic as well, but I lent it to my little brother, so it is not here right now. All right, we are moving downward, and I'm going to have to clear up some of these strange things in front here, including this picture of our best friends. You might like this one though, it's a photo of the inside of the Elcott House in Concord, Massachusetts. So, we have here from left to right, a history of the Holocaust entitled The Final Solution. We have the story of Christianity, which was a textbook of mine in university. We have The Princess Bride by Goldman, which is a beautiful copy. This book, Alive, which I'm actually not sure what that is, but I put it there for a reason, so I'll have to look into that later. We have a textbook on the the European Reformations. The Third Reich by Thomas Childers, Rebellion by Peter Ackroyd, The Women Who Flew for Hitler by Claire Moly, Jacobites by Jacqueline Riding, Jude the Obscure by Thomas Hardy, and then I have an illustrated biography of James Joyce by Alfonso Zapico, which is very, very interesting, The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self by Carl Truman, an old edition of War and Peace by Leo Tolstoy, and a beautiful, gorgeous edition of Little Women by Louisa May Alcott that I picked up in Concord when we were there on our honeymoon. The Librarianist by Patrick DeWitt, which is one of the only contemporary novels I have on my bookshelf. And then The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. And up there, some more university texts, um, 19th century philosophy compiled by Patrick Gardiner. Patterns in History by David Bevington, a Christian historian. How Not to be Secular, Reading Charles Taylor by a Christian scholar. I love that book. I've never tried to tackle Charles Taylor because I've heard that he is intense and I am not a philosophy student by nature, but this is a really good, just handy kind of shortened version of what Taylor's all about. And then I have Elie Wiesel's memoirs. Things get pretty interesting down here on my bottom shelf. I would like to point out that I have the entire collection of Tintin graphic novels. My Oma bought that for me as a university graduation present, and I am so thrilled because The Adventures of Tintin are just so nostalgic for me. I read them all as a kid. I love them. I can't wait to have these in my house forever for my kids to read. It's just awesome. Anyways, 
We have Les Mis by Victor Hugo, pronouncing that incorrectly, I'm sure. From Irenaeus to Grotius, which is a big, fat source book for Christian political thought. We have a biography, Dietrich Bonhoeffer by Eric Metaxas, which is one of my favorite biographies of all time. I love Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and I've read this book probably three times by now. Then we have the autobiography of Martin Luther King Jr., The Clash of Civilizations by Samuel Huntington, which is a classic poli-sci text. Um, I believe this is a book about the Indian Act in Canada. Then I have the Heidelberg Diary, which is a devotional going through the Heidelberg Catechism. I have an abridged, shortened version of Calvin's Institutes. We have The Divine Comedy by Dante, The Iliad by Homer, The Way the Crow Flies, which is also a contemporary novel by Anne-Marie MacDonald that I read probably five years ago and just loved, and so I've always kept it on my shelf. And then we have Vachelet Havel, A Life. Then up here, some more kind of poli-sci sort of titles. Liberalism and Its Discontents by Francis Fukuyama, The Lord of History by Daniel Lowe, um, Veritas is a history of Harvard University that I picked up when we visited there on our honeymoon. Unbelief in Re Revolution by Gruen van Prinster, a Dutch um, political figure. Translated by Dr. Harry van Dyke, who I actually know personally. Calvinism for a Secular Age by Joustra and Joustra, two former professors of mine. Disarmament under International Law. Boring, but important. Ancestral Feeling by Rene Chow Choi. What about Free Will? by Christensen, which is a fantastic exploration of the Calvinist perspective on free will compared to other Christian perspectives. He presents a very convincing argument for how Calvinism actually offers the most biblical correct interpretation of human free will in relation to divine providence. And then I have another history of the Holocaust by Lawrence Rees. And then over here, this is just a Dutch Bible. I think it was passed down from my great-grandparents. This is a little journal diary of my husband and I's relationship. And then I have three novels by F. Scott Fitzgerald, This Side of Paradise, one of my favorites, Tender is the Night, The Beautiful and Damned, and then The English Patient by Michael Ondacha thrown in there. And now we gotta see what's back here. I'm not actually sure. Ooh. <clears throat> How Should We Then Live? The Rise and Decline of Western Thought and Culture. Um, a very, very good book for Christians by Francis A. Schaefer. Mrs. Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, Victor Frankl's Man's Search for Meaning, fantastic, super great in terms of existential philosophy and also as a history of the Holocaust, Balm in Gilead, a theological dialogue with Marilyn Robinson, and then there were a couple other books in there that I do not want to share for personal reasons. Now, in the sides of my writing desk, there are bookshelves on this side, and on this side, so I'm just going to briefly show you what is on those shelves. On the right side here, we have some awesome titles. We have Down and Out in Paris and London by George Orwell, Revolutionary Characters, What Made the Founders of America Different by Gordon S. Wood, a history book, C.S. Lewis's On Stories, and then I have the entire Chronicles of Narnia collection and the entire Harry Potter collection. And down here, I have a series of notebooks that are filled to the brim. I think I use them as journals, as university notebooks, as novel writing notebooks, just everything. Um, we have The Enlightenment Reader, a source book for Enlightenment philosophy. We have The Book Thief by Marcus Suzak. The Malaise of Modernity. Um, Anne of the Island, which is the third book in the Anne of Green Gables series. And I do have number one and two of this edition as well, which I will show you later. I absolutely adore them, and I hope to collect the last four or five books in that series. The Genesis of Gender by Abigail Favell, A Passage to India by E. M. Forster, All Quiet on the Western Front by Eric Maria Remarque. That is a must-have um, war classic, for sure. Along the Infinite Sea by Beatrice Williams, Roma, which is actually a novel by Stephen Saylor, One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich by Alexander Solzhenitsyn, the Reformation of the 16th Century, a very, very old history book there, and then Isaac Bashevis Singer's Enemies, a Love Story, which I believe I picked up in Paris on my last trip to Europe. And then down here on the floor beneath my desk, A Concise History of the Netherlands, the 2020 Commission Report on the North Korean Nuclear Attacks Against the United States, so a speculative novel, a fictional history essentially, Ordinary Men by Christopher R. Browning, and then a good old textbook on the history of modern Europe. On top of my desk here, I have Dostoevsky's biography by Joseph Frank, The Literary Lives of the Inklings by Philip Zaleski and Carol Zaleski, 
This was an amazing biography that I just read through and I hope to share more about in an upcoming video, chronicling the literary lives of Tolkien, Lewis, Barfield, and Williams at Oxford in the early 20th century through both the World Wars. Fantastic. The Oxford Book of Oxford, which is a history book. And then finally, I have my antique version of Joe's Boys by Louisa May Alcott, which I picked up in Concord as well. And then on this side of my desk, I have Victory at Sea, a history book, Boone Island by Kenneth Roberts, The Bobsy Twins in the Country, Virgil's Aeneid, a very old edition, and The Death of Ivan Ilyich by Leo Tolstoy, a very old edition. And then up here I have The Book of Virtues by William J. Bennett, which is essentially very wholesome, virtuous tales. All right, down here we have The Cost of Discipleship by Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Ulysses by James Joyce, To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee, Surviving Religion 101, a biography of Abraham Kuyper, Albert Camus' The Plague, uh, a series of devotionals on hope, fighting pornography, patience, and singleness, Don't Waste Your Life by John Piper, Mornings of Bonhoeffer, another devotional, The Apology of Socrates, On Tyranny by Timothy Snyder, Letters from a Stoic by Lucius Seneca, The Secret History by Donna Tartt, um, When I Was a Child, I Read Books by Marilyn Robinson, What Went Wrong by Bernard Lewis, A Look at the Islamic World in Modernity, The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath, An English Netherlands Dictionary, um, The Communist Manifesto, The Freedom to be Free by Hannah Arendt, and Night Walks by Charles Dickens, The Complete Short Stories of Ernest Hemingway, and then The Visitors by Sally Bowman, which is one of my favorite contemporary novels. And then, down below, let us look, shall we? Oh, what's back here? Oh, The Souls of China by Ian Johnson. That's a history book looking at religion in China. The Joy of Fearing God by Jerry Bridges. Mayflower, a fantastic history book by Nathaniel Philbrook. John Calvin, a biography. Destiny Disrupted by Tamim Amsari, one of my favorite history books about the Islamic world. The Uses and Abuses of History by Margaret Macmillan. The Vanishing Past by Troby Kent. The Histories by Herodotus, and these I talked about in my video on the best history books that I read for my undergrad in history. Wuthering Heights by Charlotte Bronte. Evening in the Palace of Reason by James Gaines. No, this is a book about Bach and Frederick the Great. The Odyssey by Homer. Achterhuis, which is a Dutch version of the Diary of Anne Frank, Paradise Lost by John Milton, must have, must read, I need to read it again, The Fall by Albert Camus, The Death of Adam by Marilyn Robinson, Seven Women by Eric Metaxas, Amazing Grace by Eric Metaxas, which is a biography of George Whitefield, one of the Christian leaders who led the movement for the abolition of slavery, and then I have another book by Michael Ondaatje, <clears throat> In the Skin of a Lion. Michael Ondaatje is a fantastic Canadian writer. I love that this book is set in Toronto. As Canadians, we don't get many books that are centered in Canada, so when we do, we hold on to them. All right, let's take a tour around my house, shall we? So here, as I mentioned before, I have book one and book two of the Anna Green Gable series by Ellen Montgomery. Beautiful new editions that I love. Then I have Fear God in Your Own Village by Richard Morse. I have The World of Christopher Robin. Look at that beautiful little illustration of Christopher and Pooh and Piglet. And then, this book right here is truly one of my prized possessions. It's Om um de Outer World Sea, Dor Abraham Kuyper, so by Abraham Kuyper. And it is just absolutely stunning. Stunning. It's all in Dutch. It's Abraham Kuyper's observations as he traveled through the cultures around the Mediterranean Sea in the early 1900s, late 1800s. Um, and so yeah, I can't really read it, but I do know what it's about, and I am just in love with this stunning cover. Then we have England's History, as pictured by famous painters, and this is just a book full of famous paintings with explanations. Over here I have some of the shorter works of Emerson, a Harvard Classics edition, this right here is an ancient, ancient tome that is actually a picture book, and I, it's a, this is my grade 10 Canadian history project. <laughs> it's quite tacky, actually, but I got a great grade on it, and it was what really inspired my love for history. That grade 10 Canadian history course changed my life. I would have gone into the natural sciences and got a very practical job in nursing 
if I hadn't taken that course and just absolutely fallen in love with the humanities. So that is a precious treasure to me. And then here we have In My Grandfather's House, which is an illustrated family history of a family in the Netherlands. And it is just absolutely beautiful. It, it feels like it's my own family's history, and I'm actually borrowing it from my opa right now. Just stunning. Just look at these illustrations. Like, oh my goodness. I still need to look through it and give it a really, really good read. Um, and I hope to do that soon. All right, this is a bit of a weird one, but if you look up in that nook and cranny, you'll see a number of books. So taking a closer look at them, that big red book right there is The Complete Works of William Shakespeare. And then above it is A Biography of Abraham Kuyper by James D. Bratt. And then these books over here are kind of poli-sci books. We have Islamic Civilization and 30 Lives, Taking America Back for God, Political Visions and Illusions, The Problem of Democracy, The Great Experiment, Why Diverse Democracies Fall Apart and How They Can Endure, The Edge of Chaos, Just and Unjust War, A Time to Build by Yuval Levin, and missing from this collection is Islamic Exceptionalism. All right, then up here we have The Trial of the Germans by Davidson. We have The Rise and Fall of the Third Reich, a very old version. And then we have a big, thick this. I can't even say those words, but it is essentially a philosophy book by the Reformational philosopher Herman Doyeweerd. You probably have never heard of him. He is Dutch, he is reformed, and thus very obscure and niche. Up here are a few more titles that I actually cannot even read. And then finally up here we have You Are One of Them, A Chance to Die, The Nazi Officer's Wife, World Without End, and A Matter of Honor. So just a collection of history books and historical fiction. This thing that's going on up here is a new development. We've started to put books up here on this ledge because we're just running out of space. And the problem is that as a bookaholic, I keep collecting more and more books and we just don't have space for it. Like all of our shelves are full. There is no more room. Um, and so we have a lot of books lying around and it was just getting messy. So we brought them up here. And this is hopefully where we can keep bringing books until we run out of room. And then, I don't know. I don't know what I'm gonna do after that. <laughs> But we have On Islam by Abraham Kuyper. We have my beautiful old edition of Peter Pan by J.M. Barrie. We have a textbook of medieval Europe. And then these backwards tomes here are the children's series that I collected the other week. If you watched my video about thrifting a Joe March outfit, you'll have seen that these are all really famous children's classics. They are two in one. So for example, one of these books, half of it is Little Women and half of it is um, Little Men by Louisa May Alcott. I wish I could show you the covers in this video, but I just, I can't get up there. It's too much work and I'm already sweating. Then that green book there is an old edition of Anna Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. And then I have The Master and the Margarita by Mikkel Vygagoff. I am definitely not pronouncing that correctly. The Light Ages by Seb Falk. I also talked about this in my history book video. Rethinking Political Islam. The White Horse King by Benjamin Merck about King Alfred the Great of England. A biography of Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, the great Turkish reformer. The Jewish State by Yoram Hazoni, another thick doozy of a poli -sci book. The Endless Battle, The Devil's Arithmetic, which are short little history books that my husband picked up for me at, at the War Museum in Ottawa. The Arabian Nights, fantastic classic, I love them. Gods, Graves, and Scholars. Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. Colony of New Netherland, a history by Jup Jacobs. Island at the Center of the World by Russell Shorto, another history of the New Netherlands colonies. And that little brown book there, that little brown book on the end is, is just a vintage book about sewing clothes. And then I have The Great Gatsby. And then over there I have A Bad Business and Other Short Stories by Fyodor Dostoevsky, Poems of London, England, Our England by George Orwell, The Tenet of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte, and then underneath that is A Thousand and One Arabian Nights. Yeah, just another play on the Arabian Nights. And then finally over here I have a collection of Christian books. I use these kind of for devotionals. Alongside my Bible reading and prayer routine, I'll read just kind of a more intellectual Christian book. And so yeah, that is my collection of my all-time favorite books, all the treasured tomes that I've taken into our tiny house, 
Um, I don't know if you noticed my earrings, but they are little books. And I actually picked these up at an artisan shop in Venice a couple years ago. There was an old man there who had a shop and he just, I think he was a book binder because he was just making all his own book covers, book earrings, notebooks, cards. It was the most beautiful little stationery shop that I found ever secluded in a little alleyway in Venice. It was wonderful. And so I have these book earrings and I absolutely love them and I thought they were fitting for today's video. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you like my book collection, if you have some of the same books as me, if you have any great recommends that you think would fit in very well with my book collection and my reading interests. Please let me know below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys again in the next one.